These three particular models represent the core models for the Mani 2 group, ranging from about 46 horsepower up to 69 horsepower and with an operating capacity from about 600 kilos right up to 750 kilos with a big boy at the end there. Now cab wise for all three they're all pretty similar standard frame there is the option of side windows you can also have an optional front door optional heater and optional air conditioning as well uh, to help with visibility especially around the top uh, all control functions and uh, all your little buttons dials gauges whatever they're all placed down the pillars nice and skinny so it keeps up visibility on this model with it being a fly-by-wire throttle you get a rotary dial on the other two it's just good old-fashioned lever cable now Mustang branded machines you basically get a choice of two control systems uh, on this particular one it's a combination between hand controls and foot controls hand controls pretty simple forwards and backwards like that like driving a tank one for each track unit and then the foot controls you basically got one pedal lift and lower one pedal crowd and tilt and then the third service is on a proportional switch on one of the joysticks. Now, one of the most impressive things about the Gale and the Mustang machines, particularly because they're American made, is lots of access space. Easy fold out like that, loads of space inside, and if that's not enough, out pops a radiator, get to the batteries. You've got remote engine oil filters, remote hydraulic filters, rather than being buried, you can get them nice and easy. Now, apart from the controls, one of the other major differences between the Mustang and the Gale brands is their lift arms. As you can see on the Gale machine, it's a crank arm like that, comes up to the top of the tower there. Now, the theory behind that is when you've got partially lifted, you get more visibility over the top of the arm. Unlike the Mustang, which is just straight all the way back to the top of the tower. Also, inside the towers, on this side, you've got your diesel tank in there, and on this side, you've got your hyd hydraulic tank. There's a handy option for these skid steers, you can also get this bolt-on rear counterweight. In addition as well, it also provides a handy bumper as well, should you decide to have a fight with the wall. Driveline wise, the Gels and the Mani 2s, they employ a hydrostatic motor for each side, so for each pair of wheels on each side. That's centrally positioned, from there, there's a chain that goes to the front one and a chain that goes to the rear one. The advantage of that, or so they say, is there's less wear and tear compared to one big chain that goes around the pair of them. Also, it's got, at the back of there, it's got adjustable wheel stubs which can be moved outwards or inwards so you get a little bit of tension adjustment on the chain. Couplings wise, you get a single cast block, keeps everything nice and neat. In addition as well, you get flat face couplings and you can couple them together while they're still pressurised as well. Essentially what happens is, as you're pushing the pipe on, it compresses like that and has a little relief valve and dumps all the pressure out of the coupling. Up front, standard universal skid steer headstock with the option of hydraulic locking but as standard you just get single lever mechanical locking. Now, in the event of a breakdown or if something catastrophic should happen and you need to get to the guts of the machine, pretty easy, two bolts out, there and there, cab up, which isn't too bad, I've had worse bonnets. <laughs> Locks in place there, and you can get down to the guts of the machine, all the hydraulics, front end of the engine, whatever you need, 